ladies and gents, Jack here. New pedal day, and as we like to do here on the channel, which you may have seen before, we like to do first impressions style pedal videos. If you're new to the channel, by the way, please do us a favor, hit like and subscribe down below. But if you've seen this kind of thing from us before, you know what to expect. Now I said new pedal day, and I didn't even tease or suggest where the pedal came from. It's our friends at Strymon. We're lucky enough to get kind of an early access look at the brand new Cloudburst Ambient Reverb. And straight away, you're gonna be saying, that doesn't look like any Strymon pedal I've ever seen before. And there's a very good reason for that. They've decided to kind of enter a new pedalboard specific kind of space here in the market. And I say pedalboard specific because these days, as you, you'll be well aware, pedal boards are getting tighter and tighter and pedals subsequently are having to get smaller. Now, a lot of people are happy to make the compromise if they've got an amazing sounding reverb or delay or something, and Strymon are particularly guilty of this, of making incredible sounding pedals that just happen to be a little bit on the larger side. So if you've kind of veered away from them before because of their physical uh, detriments, as it may be, fear no more because now they've entered this new space. And I'll put my hand here for context. This thing is diddy. You know, this is kind of fairly standard MXR or Boss pedal size now with top mounted jacks, really simplified uh, control layout on with just five controls and a three position mini toggle switch. And they're kind of trimming away a lot of the fat here, at least on the surface. Now Strymon being Strymon, they know how to give you some advanced features from a limited kind of set of user controls. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of capability in here. You've got MIDI control, you've got expression pedal control, you've got TRS stereo ins and outs, you've got secondary functions and you've got different startup modes and all of that stuff. However, if you just want to plug and play, you can do it, rest assured. Now, I wanted to do this video a little bit differently to how I know Strymon will have done their marketing for this. Strymon are one of the best companies out there in terms of presenting their own products. So if you want to go really in depth, check out Strymon's own videos on the matter. I wanted to approach this how I think most of you watching this will do, and you're going to get this and plug it into your amplifier and play. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm playing this Fender Tele into a Dr. Z Z28 Mark II amp, and I'm actually using uh, my pedal board on the floor as well. This is sat right at the end of the chain. First thing I want to show you is how good this feels. Now, I appreciate that's a very different, uh, difficult thing to translate to video, but hopefully you'll get a sense of this. So I've got a pedal board running. I've got loads of cabling. I can't even, I dread to think how much footage of cable is between this guitar and this pedal and then the amp, but it's a lot. Now, thanks to the JFET analog preamp that uh, Strymon pedals have now, and they've included it in this Cloudburst, the feel is as though I'm plugged straight into the amp. It genuinely feels like I've plugged into the amp, and this is like some kind of post-processing effect. That's how kind of clean and immediate it feels. So I'm going to start with the dry tone, and then I'm going to turn it on, and hopefully you'll see what I mean. There's no sort of weird high-end loss like you sometimes get when you turn on uh, digital pedals. There's also no um, kind of artificial compensation for that by way of adding in horrible shimmery highs. It just sounds good. Let me show you. Now I also wanted to show the pedal in this state, first of all. Now it's, it's billed as an ambient reverb and it does that exceptionally well. We're gonna come on to that. But one thing that's important to note here is that despite its name of Cloudburst, this isn't just a derivative of outgoing, or not even outgoing, still existing other Strymon reverb products like the Big Sky, the Blue Sky, uh, and so on. This is a new algorithm that they developed, kind of based around the cloud algorithm that the Big Sky has. But down here on the lower end of the decay pot, you actually have more of a kind of room infused reverb. And that's what you've been hearing so far. It's just a very, very short kind of percussive thing. Most digital ambient kind of verbs, when you have this kind of setting, they just, they don't know what to do because they need time to develop their complex algorithm. This has been designed specifically to allow you to utilize the lower end of the pot. And if I just turn the mix up a little bit and just hit some percussive uh, notes, you're gonna hear it actually sounds very convincingly like a nice natural kind of room reverb.
Okay, so I thought that was quite important to point out, and I actually really like it in this setting because if you're the kind of player that, like I said before, maybe you veered away from reverb pedals or things of more complex natures that companies like Strymon make, you kind of want one reverb pedal to do a little bit of everything without having to delve into presets and MIDI and options and all that stuff. So you can plug into this, set it quite low as I have done. You know, everything really is around about the nine to 10 o'clock position apart from the tone. And it's a really nice natural sounding kind of verb. It doesn't sound like a spring, uh, but that room sound is actually quite infectious and really easy to play with. And it does just kind of bring the guitar to life. Let me kind of demonstrate a little further, again, with a little bit of a higher mix. So notching up the decay in the mix just a little bit, now we start to hear the kind of the cloud side of the algorithm come alive. And as I said before, you know, just kind of want to reiterate, this is a totally new voicing for Strymon. And they've really, uh, they took great pains to explain to me that that is what they've done with this. This is no kind of pre-existing sound that you can get from any of the other reverbs. It obviously overlaps a little bit, but the way it, all the controls interact and the way the feeling kind of sits under the fingers is quite unique and new. So notching up into kind of slightly higher decay territory, now you're starting to hear more of that ambient thing. And I haven't experimented yet with the ensemble control, which I'll come on to in a minute. That's probably the most important control on the pedal. So it's off at the moment. Let's play around a little bit with the pre-delay as well, because this has become really intuitive. And to have it as a kind of surface mount control like this makes it really easy to understand what it does and use it to the best of its ability to kind of feel right for what you want. So I'll start with it lower. In fact, we'll start with it off and then we'll gradually edge it up and you'll hear the, the, uh, the reverb start to drift further away and yet provide this nice pad under what I'm playing. So you'll hear that's a really powerful control as well right there because at the far end of the extreme there it acts as though you have a delay pedal when in fact you do not and it really gives you some distance between your dry tone and what you're playing and the nice pad kind of sensibility that sits underneath. You also hear a lot more of the modulation which let's play around with that a little bit. Again I'm going to keep the pre-delay about halfway same as the decay and just play around with the modulation now you'll notice it not only gets more intense it also gets quicker as you go higher.
So really powerful modulation control once again. The tone is kind of fairly self-explanatory, but let's just kind of you know, go from extremes just so you can hear what it's doing. I like the tone kind of on the darker side with this particular guitar and amp, but there's a lot of bandwidth there that you can kind of explore. And it's worth pointing out as well, this is not just limited to guitar. If you're a synth player or you play around with any kind of digital uh, emulations of gear or whatever, you know, plugins and stuff like that, this is an immensely powerful outboard bit of kit that I'm sure produces and all that stuff. You know about this kind of thing already, but it's more capable than I'm certainly letting on today as a guitar player, but we plow on anyway. Now the ensemble control is where things get very interesting. So what they've done here is, based around the whole ambient theme, this ensemble control has this very new computationally designed pad setting, two pad settings in fact. You can either have this kind of medium setting or a much more drastic pad setting. And it's very intelligent now, it recognizes the way that you're playing, even down to things like the dynamics of which pickup you're choosing, how you're attacking the strings. It's not just kind of this blanket pad approach that a lot of previous verb and delay pedals have used. They really took a lot of effort to make this feel interactive. So I'm gonna kind of play very simple things, but I'm gonna play them differently and you're gonna hear how the pad adapts itself to the way that I'm playing. Let me just show you the difference between the three settings, first of all, so you can hear what it's doing. And to do this, I'm gonna crank the mix way up. So, as I explained before, the medium setting kind of emphasizes more of the high-end shimmery stuff. The, the heavier setting, the forte setting, brings in some more low frequencies again. I'm gonna play around with a higher decay. We'll go for the medium ensemble setting first of all. I'm gonna do some swells and that kind of thing. And you'll hear the way that I'm varying what I'm playing. This thing just feels quite alive. Let me try and show you what I mean. So different pickup settings yield different results, different picking intensities also does the same. And yet it all kind of follows you in this very musical kind of way. Now I'm gonna emphasize this even further by doing what I think a lot of people may do with this kind of sound. I'm gonna crank the mix all the way up so it's fully wet signal. 
I'm going to do the same kind of thing with the swells and we'll play around once again with the two different ensemble settings and also a slightly higher pre-delay. Let's just play around and see what sounds cool. So went quite extreme there, but once again, it's worth pointing out, I'm running mono, I'm running through a pedal board, I'm running into the front end of a valve amp, and yet these sounds are enormous. It sounds like some kind of real uh, plug-in or studio-grade kind of post-signal reverb is what I'm trying to get across. It's got that super high fidelity. And with this new algorithm, it's got a really intelligent understanding of what I'm playing. Even though I'm playing these kind of quite complex chords and varying the dynamics quite drastically as well, the pedal is keeping up. So that was one end of the kind of, you know, the extreme end of the spectrum. We also started with the other extreme, which was the kind of more subtle room sounds. I now just want to play around a little bit with what's in the middle, you know, and maybe even put on a little bit of overdrive as well. And let's just see what we can get. I really like the ensemble thing, so I'm going to keep that in the mix, but let's drop the mix back, let's drop the decay back, uh, lower the modulation a bit as well and just see where we are. I'll show you the dry tone once again just for some context. <laughs> And on so it goes. So it's one of those pedals really, it takes a little bit of experimentation and I'm literally just playing this for the first time with you today. 
but quite quickly it's easy to get cool sounds out of it and we kind of spanned the two extremes of quite subtle to really full on and then that's a really nice in between that ensemble thing is really cool to kind of just really fill out your sound without it getting in the way you'll notice i had quite a lot of reverb there in the heaviest ensemble setting as well and yet with the mix in the right position it's just a nice backing if you want to play some lead if you want to play with some overdrive it doesn't get too much and i think that's kind of the thing that Strymon works really hard on with this pedal to avoid. They don't want it to be too daunting and too kind of unfamiliar and too difficult to get great sounds out of straight away. Yes, if you really want to deep dive, they've got an amazing new um, version of their Nixie editor as well, software editor. So if you want to get crazy and store MIDI presets and all that stuff, yes, this can do it. But if you want to plug and play, this is now probably the easiest to understand ambient reverb that Strymon have ever made. And if you'd like to find out even more information about it, and I'm sure you will, you can find everything else out that you want to know either on our website, link down below, or like I said, check out the Strymon videos because they will be way more in depth and way more capably demonstrating this thing than I have done for you today. But I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. Let me know your thoughts down below. And indeed, if this one isn't quite ticking the boxes for you and you want to check out some more reverbs and delays and modulations and all that goodness, you can find out everything else that Strymon makes and pick it up for yourself from our website. So thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna play you out with some intensely drowned out, droney, fantastic, gorgeous ambient reverb. Thank you for watching, take care. I'll see you again soon, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.